in the real world, if you're a fund manager setting up a fund with only, say, $20 million under management, it's very hard to get visibility, even if you're performing very well. Because again, like I said, very few people look at you if you're below the $150 million mark. So Mona, starting off, what are the problems in the hedge fund industry and how difficult is it to enter this industry? So um, the barriers to entry have been increasing for a long time in the hedge fund industry. Um, both the fixed cost and the variable costs are very high in terms of setting up and managing a fund and also the time from start to finish to setting up a fund can take up to a year. Um, so it can cost hundreds of thousands and take, usually on average, it takes nine to 12 months. Um, the last statistics I'm kind of reading are that in order for a hedge fund to survive, they have to have at least $150 million of assets under management to even stand a chance of survival. And what makes it really difficult is if you're a fund manager trying to pitch for funds and you're below the $100 million mark in terms of assets under management, pretty much no one's even going to look at you because no one wants to invest unless you're sort of above the kind of uh, safe level, which is seen as 150 to 200 million. So pretty hard. Absolutely. And this year is a very exciting time for Man and Port because you're developing a blockchain software for asset management. So talk us to this software and what does it do? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been building, Rito, my partner and I have been building this software uh, since early last year. Um, and the, the software uh, basically solves a lot of these um, problems and recreates uh, the technology from scratch. So one of the problems that makes the hedge fund industry inefficient today is that you get old tech, uh, new technology being built on top of old technology uh, so many times over the years um, that the process becomes inefficient and expensive. And what we're trying to do is use blockchain technology to recreate the whole process, which is uh, experimental uh, but exciting at the same time. So our technology or software can do four things. Um, at the moment, it allows you to set up a fund and pre-select the parameters of your funds using smart contracts on Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so basically using code, which is enforced by the blockchain. The second thing the software allows you to do is manage the fund uh, within the parameters that you've pre-selected. Now this is very interesting because you can automate a lot of processes with code, but as an investor you want the security to know that um, if you're investing in a fund, um, that you know the fund manager is only allowed to act within these certain parameters and who's going to enforce those. In this case, it's the blockchain. The third very interesting thing that the technology allows you to do is uh, build a visible, auditable track record. Now this might be underappreciated by some people, but in the real world, if you're a fund manager setting up a fund with only say $20 million under management, it's very hard to get visibility even if you're performing very well. Because again, like I said, very few people look at you if you're below the $150 million mark. Auditing costs are extremely expensive and marketing costs are also very expensive. So, so this kind of uh, software solves that problem as well. The fourth, um, thing that the software allows you to do is invest in um, other funds. So for example, if you wanted exposure to the crypto asset class, but you couldn't keep on top of all the different um, tokens or um, securities on the blockchain that are being issued, you can maybe invest in a fund manager that has been performing well. And that's kind of your, your you know, portfolio allocation to crypto. Um, and it also allows other people to invest in your crypto fund if you were to launch one. And a big question surrounding digital currencies is, can cryptocurrency be considered as a real asset class? In my opinion, uh, absolutely. There is still a lot of skepticism around crypto as an asset class, but I think given the lack of correlation uh, towards all the other asset classes, you know, when the market's down or when there's a big um, currency devaluation in the world, you see cryptocurrencies taking off. Um, this is the perfect hedge for um, anyone who wants to run a diversified portfolio. And I think it is the future. And I remember, um, you know, um, when you think about junk bonds, for example, 40 years ago, no one had uh, ever, no, no one owned junk bonds in their portfolio. And the person who made it successful was Mike Milken when he pioneered the first junk, successful junk bond fund and became one of the wealthiest people in the world on the back of it. Today, every, every, literally every hedge fund or that every, every multi-strategy hedge fund would have um, uh, junk bonds in their allocation or in their portfolio. Um, same with emerging markets. You know, there was a time when emerging markets were very unpopular. Um, and it wasn't until Templeton pioneered the first emerging markets, markets, emerging markets fund and made a killing in it that everybody thought, hang on a second, we should be looking at emerging markets. Um, also, 
ETFs, you know, John Bogle pioneered that. It's gone from being uh, thought of as almost an un un uninvestable asset class to now over a $1 trillion market cap uh, in terms of market. And uh, c commodities, you know, until 20 years ago, again, uninvestable by most people's standards. And then we got the, you know, GSCI and everybody now owns all of these things in a diversified portfolio. Um, so I think that next asset class is crypto. Um, and I want to make sure, or we want to make sure, um, Rito and I are adamant that when the next John Bogle or the next Mike Milken pioneers the crypto space, they will be using Melon, and that's our ultimate goal. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights. Thank you. Well, that's all from us here in the Geneva studios, but we want to find out how you found this interview. So please do like and comment on dukascopy.tv.